Good morning, fellow Ambazonians. Shabbat Shalom. Today, na Saturday, number seven day for this month for January 2023. My name na Kapo Daniel. You are probably wondering where are the jingles of our daily podcast. Well, the answer is simple. I have broken my speaker and the equipment that I use to produce our daily podcast. But we are very dedicated to go ahead with our program the way it is because as you know we are in the middle of a war and this is a liberation struggle the life of eight million ambazonians are on hold our parents grandparents idps political prisoners are all on the edge and everybody is waiting to see how this our journey would turn out to be so there is no time to wait we'll continue to fight for our freedom and do what our people deserve which is a service to them that we provide through this medium of communication. My daily podcast, our daily podcast is a major channel that the Ambazonian Governing Council used to push the agenda for the nationalism of Ambazonia and for our freedom. And uh, we have the full support of our president, the president of the Governing Council, Dr. Chu Lucas Ayaba. So ladies and gentlemen, this is not just a cliche. We are not doing journalism or advertisement. This is a true communication for our liberation struggle. My name is Capo Daniel. I go by the name Capo Daniel. My names are Ndong Emmanuel, as you know very well. But in keeping with our tradition and our way of life as we grew up, having nicknames and go by names in the light of General Ivor, my name and Ndong Emmanuel, I go by the name Capo Daniel. I am Capo Daniel. I am the Deputy Defense Chief of the ADF the anti-kidnapping czar of the ADF. I am also the spokesman, the spokesperson of the Ambazonian Governing Council, a properly constituted body of Ambazonians across the globe in Ground Zero and in the diaspora who have put together this institution and organization to help them to fight for their nationalism and the independence of our country. Our leader in this organization in the Governing Council, it is Dr. Chua Ayaba, was duly elected by the Ambazonian people who are constituted in this uh, organization. This daily podcast is meant to bring you the truth, to bring you important information and update to help us as we, we navigate this journey to our freedom. Our analysis and commentary are based on facts and substantiated evidence, not just on our own personal opinions. So take what we say seriously. And if you are listening to me, fellow Ambazonians, remember that you are one of the smartest people in Ambazonia or in the world. Because only smart people are attracted to knowledge, to sound minds, and not just entertainment. You are all welcome. So fellow Ambazonians, today we will start with images and videos that are coming from the colonial capital of Yaoundé, the colonial uh, state of Cameroon that have colonized our territory, Ambazonia. Pictures have been seen and videos seen of the second in command, second in line of power of La Republic du Cameroon, the head of their Senate. This one, na, they meet in the way La Republic, their president, Idigetam, every beginning of a year, where all cabinet, a cabinet member, and all his supporters them for their government and their courtic regime for CPD and the council. Lodi. So we would not see Marseille Nyat Njifenji. Na person we come from Bangante, 88 year old person, the Kamfakan Salot Pobia in of even Waka. This one a congregation and meeting of dementia patients. <laughs> so fellow Ambazonian, the video it don't be published, it don't be a mockery for that country. And uh, I'll play an excerpt. President du Senat, on dirait un criminel enchaîné en train de marcher. Regardez-moi ça. Ça là, c'est un pays normal, ça. Ça là, c'est ceux là qui ont pris le pays en otage. Regardez les deux là. Le premier et le deuxième du pays. C'est pas la peine. Les jeunes, vous avez fait quoi? So, those are commentary made by a famous Ivorian uh, commentator and activist making a mockery of uh, La République du Cameroon, saying what type of a witchcraft is this? All dementia patients ruling the country from number one to number two people who are unable to walk by themselves who should be in the house of elderly and retired people are the ones that are in the helm of that country 
and not far behind the 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 the, 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 the dementia patients and old diaper wearing senior citizens was our own very own Ambazonia son Frundi John Frundi who once held as the the most strongest opposition party who used to talk with talk to Pobia by showing his finger up and his fist in the air have become a lap dog coming from pointing a finger to Pobia meeting Pobia and today we have seen John Frundi holding Pobia's hand shaking his hand with both hands what a shame what a humiliation and a big lessons for our people who have once had hope in Nijon Fundi to champion their cause. Nijon Fundi have previously been arrested twice by the Ambazonian Defense Forces and during our arrest he confessed that he was trapped by Paul Bia with a case where he was entrapped and he had to, to give in and receive money as a result because he was he had no way out. So he himself is a criminal, somebody who have sell his conscience and the people who have had hope in him and today Pobia, the demons Frundi once preached. Today, Pobia is shaking his hand and Frundi holding Pobia hands with two hands. A lesson for Ambazonia. Nij and Frundi have sell out. What have changed from 1990 to today? It has gotten worse. The monster and the corrupt politicians we know of La Republic du Cameroon have become the killers and butchers of today. As we are speaking this December, we saw the houses and villages, entire villages raised to the ground by Paul Bia's army. We saw that in Oku, where over 45 houses were burned to the ground. We saw that in Bui, where houses were burned in Gri. We also saw that in Baipe and Panya, where houses were burned. Imagine the life of those women. Those houses represent families. Their bands, their banda, where they store food all burned to the ground their livestock all destroyed by Paul Bia. Paul Bia has become a monster, a killer, and a murderer, and a genocide. So if Rundi was against him for being a corrupt politician who cling on to power, what would you expect of somebody to do when that corrupt individual has become a murderer? You would expect Rundi not to be in that hall. But indeed, Rundi has betrayed the people and has become a traitor. He is now shaking hands with the same Pobia he accused of killing the youth in Pinyin. Frundi himself came out to tell the Ambazonian people that the Cameroon military rounded up people with the help of Atangan Jipo in Pinyin where there was a massacre in 2017, luring them that they were coming to join Ambazonian forces, which was an attempt to kill youths who were able to fight against La Republic to Cameroon. They were all massacred and slaughtered. The same Frundi have walked on the blood of the children in Pinyin, the blood of Ambazonians, Bebe Mata and the rest, to hold the hands of their killer in Yaoundé, in a shameful manner. Frundi is a disgrace and represents that generation that have failed to live up to the expectation of our people. But they should know that the giant they see in Pobia have crumbled and the state of Cameroon is finished. The economic of La Republic to Cameroon is in a dire state. The loans are, that have been provided to Cameroon recently by the European Union are clear indications that the Cameroon government is in a hard attack and the system will collapse. Not only have prices for commodity, commodity risen, the Cameroon government is trying to rip off citizens and Ambazonians, captive people and slaves to get money to survive and keep the economic uh, uh, flowing in a state of coma. The European Union have provided an emergency money which they have specifically tied to Ambazonia of over 225 million CFR. This loan that is meant to keep La Republic du Cameroon afloat, not to completely crumble with the La Republic government unable to pay their salaries as they have cut back even on entrances into exams that they have used previously to steal money. It shows you that the La Republic is dying and this is a message from the European Union. 
that the care of the international community is in the people of Ambazonia. Recently, Al Jazeera and many other uh, prominent internationally mainstream media have taken upon the cases of our refugee as well, and the issue is being pushed at the highest level in the international community. Time for justice for Ambazonia have come. La Republic du Cameroon have suffered economic damages that are irreparable from the war in Ambazonia and have lost the credibility and support of the international community. They are crumbling, not just from corruption, but also from incompetence and a formula of governance that is unsustainable and the time for end of Cameroon as we have known it has come and the time for justice for Ambazonia have come. The truth shall prevail. Ambazonia shall have its right of self-determination as Cameroon will crumble to its knee. At this very dark hour of our history, as we watch Cameroon crumbles and we watch the realignment and recognition by the international community on the inevitable existence and recognitions of the independence of Ambazonia, our people must understand the time in which we live in. It's a very, very complex moment to the psychology of our people who have been used to infighting and the chaos that war have brought upon our territory. Due to the change in policy, the Ambazonian Governing Council have pushed for the issue of education that was adopted by all other Ambazonian groups as well. This have meant and successfully reopened almost over 80% of our education capacity since the beginning of school and on November and October, school children in Ambazonia have increased by 20%. We are going to input these statistics through ACN. We are also going to show the movement back of our people who are returning from La Republic to Cameroon. The danger and the warnings we have put outside concerning our citizens being caught in the crossfire in case of the death of Paul Bia and the uprising within La Republic to Cameroon and Bazunias will definitely be targeted by the Bulu Beti clique and infighting in La Republic to Cameroon. People have heard that message and they are returning home en masse. This return of our people, especially in areas where we have liberated, can be confusing with the normalcy under Ambazonia as being the end of the struggle. No, we are at our peak. Our struggle, our forces are more lethal. La Republic to Cameroon have tried to seize some opportunities in Quen, in Bamenda, which is the capital of our resistance and demonstrated some show of force with the militarization to enable the enablers to visit Ambazonia. But a lot of those programs have been scrapped because they were unable to come to Bui and uh, bring return the, the, the traditional things that were brought from Germany. We are winning and we are winning fatly. Our people have to adjust themselves to the period of Adler where we have a transition into Ambazonian rule. Our fondoms are being empowered traditional council are being empowered to help out to set up uh, credible institutions that can administer ad administrations and uh, law and order within our communities. In, uh, in uh, Bengui, in the land of Meta, we are still re re establishing ourselves and every day we are seeing the real, the real pain our people have been going through in uh, the Meta land as a result of uh, of our forces that were basically Ambazonian um, forces were abandoned to themselves by the failure of the IG and the ARF system that was there. And yesterday, a sad one came up where some of those lone wolves went and uh, killed an individual. And it's a public matter we have told our people. Each time there is a death, it becomes a public matter. We have to address it to our people. <laughs> So the, the incident happened for a village with the call and say Muna, for instance Meta, where one of the I will not even give these boys the dignity of calling them ARF. We know that they use the ARF to hide and seek legitimacy to continue to harass our people. There is nothing like ARS. It is something that Sako set up and put Fiu Masha as a head. It has crumbled. All the soldiers in Ground Zero have refused and rejected the IG leadership in the diaspora. So I think it's useless calling the name ARF anymore. It is really just a name that people use to hide behind. And in Ground Zero, the former soldiers, these were soldiers who have been with the commando. Previously, they have also been dispersed around the Bengui area there. 
they have guns they keep guns in the house they are no longer fighting actively fighting for ambazonia they time to time go and harass our people they are now gangs these are criminal gangs and uh we we, we mourn with the family that have lost somebody in the hands of these gangs gang members these are internal ambazonian problems and uh, our forces will try to liaise in the peaceful most manner to resolve this issue and put an end to these excesses our we have put a code of conduct to guide the conduct of our people that ban kidnapping for ransom that ban harassment of our people and preserve the life of, of our people not to take the life the actions of this individual do not represent the conduct of ambazonian forces or the spirit of our people or whatever we are fighting they should be seen for who they are these are criminal gangs who are taking full advantage of war to harass our individuals and let them know that it will not be tolerated and it will stop it will stop let everybody in ground zero know that very well we will never allow our people to be defenseless even with internal challenges of criminal gangs or cartels each of these actions whenever you use your gun to kill an ambazonian or use it to harass people and take money from them simply because you had once in a time become an ambazonian fighter that action makes you that makes you not an ambazonian fighter you become somebody who is fighting against ambazonians not somebody who is fighting for them and it will never be accepted we will challenge it and we will never exploit people or use people who are like that and that goes to all the faction in ambazonia if just because you want to be relevant you just choose people who are doing this type of things you give them legitimacy to be harassing our people you take no responsibility in their actions or try to follow up to make sure that they are using the weapons you provide properly then you have become a problem because it is counterproductive to the will of our people to resist la republic to cameroon and we call on all of our citizens to work hard to resolve these internal uh, problems that we have that have come as a result of poor Bia war against ambazonia for the vast majority of ambazonian fighters they are doing the right thing and we should not over emphasize our need to fight against these excesses that we have seen that have caused us a lot of pain we call on our people to collaborate with our forces they have been they have demonstrated credibility our leadership have demonstrated patriotism and the will to fight for the people's right and to fight to defend the people's interests dr chul lucas ayaba have personally i think he's been the only leader who have come out to condemn kidnapping for ransom personally and condemn forces who have done so and uh, even when very hard on forces who even collect money for simply barrier without any excessive money not just money excessive money it is not acceptable we will never accept it and we will take the responsibility to to fight and defend the people for that this is also fighting for our freedom for the meantime we call on all ambazonians to uphold the first monday every monday monday goes down should be a, a religiously protected demonstration for ambazonia for our people to uphold our independence the enemies to our freedom are fighting the clouds have gathered yaoundi fly uh, clouds have also gathered the evil fly the evil clouds have also gathered to fight the possibility of ambazonian independence to be fast tracked and we ask our people who are men of god all across ambazonia pray for our leader dr cho ayaba who is leading the nationalist movement that plays the role of vanguard to our liberation struggle that they should we should prevail and the clouds of the enemy the clouds of slavery that have gathered in yaoundi should fail put ambazonia in prayer while you do the right thing for those who have money those who are working make sure you invest every little bit you have to arm forces arm our forces strengthen them so that we can kick out the bulu betik clique that is holding our country hostage on behalf of la republic to cameroon god bless you all capo daniel signing out